Welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Lesney Matchbox number 69A Nestle's van. This particular model was produced by Lesney from 1959 until 1965. Uh, the variations of this casting, uh, most of them were this maroon color. Later, they changed the color to a brighter red, but this is an earlier version. Uh, it has the gray plastic wheels with the fine tread on them. And uh, when I posted my earlier video about uh, upcoming models, by and far this was the one that you guys wanted to see the most. Uh, the reason that I picked up this particular casting is that even though it's very play-worn, very rough shape, the, uh, the decals on this are almost perfect. If you look at the casting, the uh, area where the decal sits is uh, recessed in the casting. And so for that reason, I believe all of the, the play wear, the nicks, the scratches, everything that's along all the high edges um, didn't get into those original uh, water slides, the, those transfers that are in there. So these are actually in remarkably good shape, good condition. And uh, I thought this was a great candidate for what I like to call a sympathetic restoration. So we're going to do some brightening, some cleanup on this, try to get it back to a like new condition. Um, but I'm going to do what I can to preserve as much of the original model as possible. As you can see, overall, this is not in bad shape. Um, the base is a little wonky on it. Um, I think that's just because it's loose. And as you can see on this side, it is missing the sliding door. The doors on these models were also made out of die cast, and they're held in place by two little tracks. And one track is inside the top casting uh, along the roof there, and then the other piece of the track is on the base. And I believe on this particular model, what probably happened is when the base came loose, um, that inside door piece was able to uh, jump out of those tracks and fall out and be lost to time. Um, I did do some checking and I was able to order replacement doors for this model through uh, MK Model Car Parts. Um, and so I, I ordered those. Uh, it's an awesome group out of the Netherlands. And um, when I originally did the paint on this, I didn't have the door. So I kept a little of that uh, mixed up paint so that I could match the door later on. But um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Teardown on this should be really easy because our base is already loose. So the first step in this uh, sympathetic restoration is just to clean up these parts. Now I want to be really careful with this top casting. I don't want to let it sit in the water too long. I don't want to let it soak. I'm not sure what exactly the condition of those uh, original decals are and I don't want them coming loose but I do want to get all of the dirt and crud off of this. So a uh, quick little dunk and then uh, just a, a paper towel to kind of wipe down the the worst of the dirty areas on this. Um, you can see quite a bit of paint loss on the front grill um, and the back bumpers there. Uh, it does look like those were all originally painted so we'll have to see what we can do uh, as far as the restoration efforts go to restore that. Seeing the rear bumper painted on this does tell me that this is an earlier model. Um, and you can see I got a little, little fleck right there under the L, which I think I might be able to touch that up too. 
to prep this casting for paint, I'm starting with a very, very fine grit emery paper. Um, I'm just kind of hitting all the areas, especially these areas where there was a lot of chips and flecks, because those will show up as an unevenness uh, when I do the, the touch-up paint on this. So just kind of hitting those areas that are kind of the, the worst uh, affected, just to smooth those, even those out. I don't want to strip this. Um, I don't really need to strip it. And of course, dunking it in, in any kind of uh, chemical process, I would more than likely damage those original decals. So uh, taking a little bit different uh, method, a little little different approach on this, and that is just to hit those high areas and in, in the worst scratches that are in there. Um, want to totally stay away from those original decals. Now, I've not sure if this is going to work we're going to try it out but to uh, protect the decals when i paint i'm starting with just a little uh, scotch tape just regular 3m uh, scotch tape uh, this is a i think it's like a satin finish i don't know that it really matters that much what you use but uh, i'm going to put a little strip of tape over the original decals to try to protect those uh, when we get down to the painting now, obviously, I don't need the whole area taped, and I've got more tape than I need, so I'm using my exacto uh, blade, and I'm just kind of very lightly going around the edge of that recessed area on the casting. I think that recessed edge is going to be the easiest way for me to hide that transition of the new paint from the old paint. Now, I don't want any bleeding to get underneath the edge of the tape. I don't want to ruin these decals. So the next step, I'm using a, a toothpick, and I'm just going to go around the edges of that scotch tape and kind of burnish it down. Uh, you've seen me do something similar on my box repairs with the mending tissue, and kind of the same uh, intent here. I want to make sure that that adhesive on the tape is stuck really well all the way up to each one of the edges. So with one side done, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. With both of our original decals taped up and ready to go, uh, it's time to mix some paint. Now, I, I work on multiple castings usually at the same time, and this is a little sneak preview of another one I got coming up. Worked on this taxi here, and I noticed when I was painting it, and I was trying to match that original kind of maroon color, that it was exactly the same match as this Nestle's van. And so uh, I, I kind of learned from the first casting uh, exactly what the color mix needed to be for the Nestle's van. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, showing this. I'm going to try to speed up the video a little bit. Um, but essentially, I got uh, one eyedropper full of the gloss dark red and then added just a couple of um, drops of black to it. It's got to be darkened up just a little bit. Um, and you want to kind of inch up on it. Um, but this one, I, like I said, I, I kind of had the happy accident of coming across the, the first uh, casting and seeing what a good match that color was. So uh, I'm just going to mix up a, a second batch here and we'll get this casting painted.
So all of our paint is now touched up. And uh, you can see this is a really light coat. Uh, I really, you know, the, the paint underneath was not in bad shape, really served as a good base coat for me. So I didn't really have to go too thick, too heavy on this. And you can see kind of from those areas where I taped um, just exactly how thick this coat is. Now I've got a fair amount of this paint left over and that's good uh, because I don't have the replacement doors yet for this. So I'm going to take all my leftover paint and uh, this is another little tip for you. Uh, the, one of the things I like about these testers paints is they come in these really nice little glass jars and anytime I've used up one of my jars I like to uh, throw a little paint thinner in there, get it all cleaned out and I keep them. So when I've got a, a restoration like this where I know I've got to do it in two parts and I need to keep that paint for a long time, I can take the leftover paint that I've mixed up and make sure that I've got an exact match on the next uh, piece for this uh, replacement door. So I'm going to pour all my extra paint down into one of my leftover jars here. So when I get my door in, I'll be able to touch it up and have the paint match exactly. So I've let this paint cure out for uh, about three days now, and it's finally time to see if our little experiment has paid off. Uh, so I'm just using my toothpick right here at the edge of the uh, sellotape, the, the scotch tape that we put down there, um, just enough to get one of those corners started peel, peeling up. And so I'm going to use my tweezers. And I want to pull at a very specific angle when I take this off because I want to kind of cut the edge of the paint that's on there. And I want to make sure that I'm not pulling off any of that original decal that's there. And this looks like it worked out beautifully. So I still got... There's one little uh, kind of chigger there right underneath the L. That was there before... We knew we were going to have to touch that up, but uh, I've got extra of this color mixed up, so I think I can easily touch that up when I get the replacement door piece in. So we'll go ahead and try this on the other side. Again, just light pressure to, to peel up the edge. And I really, when you burnish down the edges like that, these are really stuck well. Um, I didn't want any of that paint bleeding under, so this looks like this side turned out just as good as the other side. So this was a, a fun little experiment. I'm glad it, it worked out. And uh, you can see comparing the touched up paint to the paint that's underneath the decal, the color match on this is just almost perfect. Um, I really, I got lucky with, with this one for sure. But uh, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. So our next step in this sympathetic restoration is to restore some of the uh, painted details on this casting. I'm using the Tester's Metallic Silver as I found that is as close of a match to the original silver that the ladies at Lesney would have used. Um, and I'm going to put back onto this casting all of the same details or the details in the same areas that it originally had. So for this particular variant, um, it had the painted grill, painted headlights, painted front and rear bumpers. Now, I mentioned earlier, that's one of the ways that I know that this is one of the earliest versions of this model that was out there. Um, only the first year were the rear bumpers painted. Uh, later on, I think they just decided it was uh, too much time going down the assembly line. And so all of the later models, the rear bumpers were not silver. They were the same maroon or red as the rest of the casting. But this particular casting had painted rear bumpers. And so to be true to what it was originally, uh, we're going to paint the rear bumpers back as well. Um, this is honestly, out of all the different things that we go through in a restoration, this really is my favorite part because uh, to me, adding back in these little details is really what makes these things come alive. 
and uh, it it does take a little patience, does take a little time, but uh, it's one of my favorite parts of doing these, and so um, we're going to touch these up, and then a couple more days to let that all cure before we get into reassembly. So over the weekend, uh, I finally got in my replacement door from MK Models. And so I was able to use my perfect color match paint that I kept over from uh, the beginning parts of this restoration to uh, add a quick coat to my replacement door. And as you can see, the color match is great on these. Now, uh, I put them in my little forceps to, to uh, be able to hold on to them and paint them. And so you'll see one edge of the casting there uh, didn't get painted. I'm not really concerned about this uh, because when you put it into the casting, as you can see, you're never going to see it. Uh, not when the door is closed, not when the door is open either. Um, and so that's uh, kind of one of those, it's just going to be a little secret. Only you and I are ever going to see that and only ever know about it. Um, and our base here, you can see this cleaned up just beautifully. Uh, did a quick touch up to the black on the paint. This uh, little raised piece on this side, that's the track that holds the, the door in place. Um, I didn't sh want to show all the details in the base and the axle and wheel cleanup on this. Uh, this is already a, a bit of a longer restoration. And so, uh, you know, it's the same thing as all the others. To, uh, to assemble this uh, back together, I'm going to use just a couple dabs of super glue uh, right on each side of this kind of squared um, post here in the front. And it's not really a post. I don't know what the, the correct term is. If you know uh, for, for what Lesney called these things, uh, leave that down in the comments below. Um, a lot of these older models use this kind of square piece with two little tabs on it that would get mushroomed out. Um, I, I don't know what the term is, but to put it back together, I just use a little dab of super glue on each side of that little square tab post and uh, some firm, even pressure down right in the front to get it to snap back in place. So that's going to complete our restoration on this. You can see that replacement door looks really good in there. And, uh, it's got just a little handle so you can kind of get your fingernail in, but this one is loose enough. All I got to do is just tip the casting and it slides back and forth really nice in those tracks. So a really great piece on the replacement door. And here we have our finished restored number 69A Nestle's Comer van. So this was really a fun little restoration to do you know, minimal efforts really on this and uh, got to try something new with the masking off and, and taping the original decals. Now that I know that works, uh, it's definitely something that I will try to do in the future. Anytime I get any of these models in that have a, a pretty decent looking original uh, water transfer, I know now that I can work around that and uh, I can can do a strip and a restore and keep the original decals on this. Um, the little touch-ups on the silver really brought this back to life. And, uh, you know, as I said, this is one of the rarer, more, more hard-to-find models with the, the painted bumper. Um, and as an early version of this casting, uh, this is definitely one that I wanted to show the respect due to it. Um, and do just a real light restoration on this. So very, very happy with how this came out. Uh, as always, want to know your thoughts. Leave me a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think I did right, what I did wrong. I do read all my comments. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give us a like. And if you want to keep up with this and all of our future restorations, click that subscribe button. As always, we thank you for uh, watching and join us next week for another vintage diecast restoration.